Oh no, oh no. Hello, yeah, I got, I get, just give me a minute. Yeah. And the TNA, Kikichi, welcome, God bless you. Thank you. Um, yeah, forgive me if, uh, for running a bit late again. Um, don't worry. I will um, I'll get better and better as I get used to the technology. All right. Okay. Um, just let's listen to this music just um, for a few seconds, um, maybe a minute or so, um, before I get into what I have to share this evening. Chisco Curtains, you're welcome. God bless you. The song says, When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, it says, When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. I'll be there. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, let me do it a bit. Let me just let it play in the background. Mm. Okay, I just want to kind of open up with a prayer. Father, I want to thank you. Good, uh, I want to thank you for your goodness, um, for your wonderful providence, um, protection, and guidance, and provision. I just give you glory. I pray, oh God, that today as we deliberate on an important topic, a universal topic, that uh, you will enlighten our minds and our hearts. Uh, I, I pray that uh, you reveal yourself to us through the entrance of your word. Lord, that we will make the necessary spiritual adjustment. And at the end of the day, oh God, our life will count for life and eternity. And we will be counted among those who please you while on earth. I pray that, oh God, that our, our names be inscribed in the Lamb's Book of Life. I pray this, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pastor Alan Jesse, God bless you. Okay, I I start. Um, I, I I titled this today's topic lessons from the graveyard. Lessons from the graveyard. Of course, um, the songs that have uh, the two songs I played usually they, they sung in funerals. Um, for our services. Yes, last week I dealt with the absurdity of unyielded gifts. Talking about how God has gifted us and, and blessed us as humans, 
given us gifts, talents, abilities, and competencies. And the purpose of it, as I said, and I did emphasize the fact that the purpose for those gifts and talents, they are two pronged. One is to glorify God. Two is to be of blessing to humanity. Which again in turn uh, redounds to the praise of God. Because you see, we, if we touch the way to touch God, for good or for ill is to touch humans. None of us can impress God with our abilities. None of us can sing enough. Gift of Kere Onyechi, God bless you. None of us has such a wonderful voice that can impress God of itself and itself. None of us can cook, no matter how delicious and how, how wonderful a cook you are. None of us can do anything we can do on earth that can really, in itself, as of itself, impress God. The only way we can impress God and serve Him is to reach out to humans whom he made in his own image. If you are a blessing to mankind, then God is happy. So whatever you do to the least of these ones, you've done it for, for me. So our gifts are meant to serve people. And do so we glorify God. But conversely, we cannot hurt nobody. I mean, there's some people who they, they wave their clenched fist uh, in, uh, uh, um, <laughs> you know, just wave it in the face of this, we well, call it, you know, you know uh, so, so to say, the face of God. But really, it, it, what can you do to God? You can't hurt him directly. That is, there's nothing you can, you no, know, he's unmoved and untouched by humans' wicked machinations. The only way we can hurt God is by hurting people made his own image. Remember that scripture in, 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 in Acts chapter 9 when he confronted Saul of Tassel. I said, Saul, Saul, on the way to Damascus. Why do you persecute me? So I say, who are you, Lord? Pastor Samuel Moe, God bless you, welcome. Thank you. Who are you? Who are you, Lord? You know, he said, I'm Jesus whom you are persecuting. So the only way you can hurt God is by hurting people. He made his own image, particularly his people. Okay. So that's all. that was the where I was um, what I was dealing with last week. I intended to continue this week um, to expand that theme or that topic to see how it applies, let's say, in the church um, across ministry gifts and the respective interrelated callings. Um, but um, I'll share that for next time. Uh, what's on my mind uh, now is to uh, deal with a topic that um, I will tell you where, where it came from. I kind uh, of God bless you. Welcome. Two days ago, um, um, recently we, we lost uh, a friend, a very close friend and, and, and Christian brother. Um, honestly, the, the, um, uh, the pain of death, death is always an enemy, no matter how old or how young. Um, we believe God for uh, um, this uh, gentleman to pull through 
the sickness of the, the situation that he suddenly uh, found himself in. And um, where we thought that he was, he was turning the corner for uh, for good, turning the corner, no, um, no, getting better. Um, the we got the news that uh, he passed, and um, the, uh, Friday was his funeral, and uh, since that time, just being at the funeral and I'm, I'm watching everything, hearing everything, um, it's been on the thought of him, you know, and whatever I learned from there is sitting on my mind, and so I couldn't shake that off. So I decided to talk about that. Um, so I titled this Lessons from the Graveyard. I want to go to the Ecclesiastes chapter 7, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, just to read a few scriptures there, uh, a few uh, verses there. Verse 1, I start from verse 1, it says a good, a good name, this is New King, King David's version, a good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that, for that is the end of all men. And the living will take it to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter. For by a sad countenance, the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. But the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. Okay. That's up there. That's a read from one to four. Says the good name is better than precious ointment. Uh, our friend that passed, mm. okay, uh, um, he listening to, I mean, well, I've known him personally, yeah, um, he, he's. Uh, He's um, um, served under my team when I was there in the uh, the head of uh, prison worship team of uh, the church I used to attend. Um, well, one thing uh, I know about him, I mean, from personal experience, for things and for things I've also have heard, is about the way he used his gift. We talked about our gift that we started from last week. The way he used th that which his input, his ability, his gift to serve people, to 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 love people, to honor people. I mean, hearing people talk about him, it like I, I mean, I I could I would just like nodding. Yes, that's him. That is him. That is him. That is him. I didn't. I I don't know him to be such a uh, person that will come and quote scriptures and from Genesis and Revelation and so on and so forth. Uh, um, I do, I didn't know him as what people call Jim Jim, you know, uh, Christian. But in his own little way, he had his he had his his um, struggles and issues, like we all you know, all do. If I want to be funny, you know factual about it and truthful about it. But he, 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 he made himself available to people. He used that which he's able to do. The car that I use now, he helped me to uh, uh, procure it. And a lot of people could say different things about him. So it is, it says the verse will say, good name is better than precious ointment. And all this we have said about him, both from the family, from the ch uh, children, the brothers and sisters, friends. Remember what I said earlier, the way we can serve God is by serving humanity. 
and uh, my friend did. He served, he served God by touching humans. The way he put his life, you know, his his, his like neck on the, on the chopping block on behalf of others. Mm. Okay, but in, in, um, more relevantly, this verse two says, "Better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting." Uh, now that is that is. Uh, it doesn't really, from human point of view, it does not make sense. It does not make sense in saying that. I mean, come on, do we naturally? We naturally choose to go to where people mourn and go and mourn, or instead of going to where there's party and 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 feasting and music. And of course, we love we we love when I mean, human beings are by nature hedonistic. You know, like to just go and have fun rather. Go where you shed tears and mourn, and but God's word, you see, when God says something, even when it sounds um, antithetical or it sounds paradoxical or it sounds counterintuitive, we need to pay close attention and unpack it and borrow into it and to actually say, God, what are you saying? What are you saying? Why is it better to go to the house of mourning? If if you know a service, go to the graveyard where people are some someone is being buried, where hearts are broken. Why is it better to go there than to go to the house of feasting, party, music, hilarity? For one thing, it says us here actually for the same, because that is the end of all men. In other words, every one of us is heading that way. Sooner or later. That's uh, what I was in secondary school. Hey, Senator Clemens, God bless you. No, uh, Pastor Musa Dahosa, God bless. Isaac Mohoney, God bless. Welcome. Right. Um, Everybody is headed that way. That is this thing about it's a, that is universal. And, and the, the funny thing is that it's only us human beings, only humans, among all the creatures of the world, only humans. Hola, you okay? Welcome. Only human beings. Charlie Stone, thank you for joining. Only us humans, only we humans, know that we'll die. You know what I'm saying? Only human beings have the knowledge, the consciousness that they will die. The dog doesn't know. Chicken don't know. No, no, the, the, the chimps, whatever. What a creature you, you can think of. They do not know that they die. They do die, but they don't know. Of course, that in itself brings some kind of, you know, causes some kind of trepidation uh, um, yeah, um, sometimes. Um, anxiety, we need to ponder what will happen after. How will it be like? Will it be painful? Will it be peaceful? And all, and all that. But also, there is a blessing in that, in the sense that it gives us. Each one of us opportunity to assess our lives, to prepare for that inevitability, to make amends when where there's time or why there is time, to recalibrate. And to reposition ourselves spiritually, realign ourselves. It's a blessing. So that's one of the things that get drained home when you go to the house of mourning. You realize that that's the way of our flesh. Our time will come. And so it gives opportunity to reflect on our lives. And make amends if needed.
the, another thing that we learn from the graveyard or place of mourning is the futility of human ambition and achievements. Human ambition and achievements. Uh, you see, when somebody I've never had, I mean, okay, let me, let me put it this way. Generally, when people die, little is remembered of how much money they, they made. In fact, the richer they are, the more confusion uh, uh, will follow after their death. Sometimes much prosperity scatters their, you know, their, their family after the death of the, the person concerned. You don't remember how many, which, you know, how many posh hotels they slept in, how many posh cars they rode, how fantastic, how great their, their, their houses are, how many uh, places they travel. That is okay, fine. You could, I mean, someone could write a biography about them and include some of those things, but those, those are not the things that interest people. What remains is their character, the things they've done, their, the love they've shown, the relationship they formed, how they impacted lives, how they touched lives. And, and, and when, when, when they're talking about uh, our friend about, uh, that was buried on Friday, a lot was said about how he touched lives with his talent, with his knowledge of you know, fixing cars, uh, with his knowledge of, 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 in fact, with his cooking even, with his time, with just practical help, with his, you know, uh, handmanship, if, if that's the right word, I don't know, you know, the, the very, uh, you know, one of those people that can use their hands uh, and, and, and do things and repair things. It's what we've done that is remembered. The kind of person you are that is remembered. So these are the things that count. And this sense is that they cannot die. They cannot, th those memories and those legacies cannot die. They, you know, no, no casket is too is big enough to contain those things. No grave is deep enough to swallow those legacies. That's one of the, the things you learned. That one of the things again that I my mind was um my, I was turning over in my mind, you know, as the funeral service was going on and internment, the internment was going on, yes. Any other things, plans, ambitions, Any other things, achievements, boastings, they're gone. They're gone. In fact, one of the things that was said was that um, he was planning to his uh, 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 50th birthday with um, some friends who also turned you know, 50. Uh, they were talking about it, you know, making plans. It, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. That's the scripture. Um, in James chapter 4, 
Oh, I think uh, it's a good one to read, I think. Uh, James 4. Let me get it from. Yes, it says here, um, I read it from. It says, I'll start from verse 13. Right. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Say, so why do you not even know? Say, so why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are in mist that appears for a little time, a little while. And then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. It warns us against presumption. Boasting that we will do this, we will achieve that. This is not Rather, we should say, if God wills, if it's the will of God, if God spares us, then we will do this. We should always predicate our plan and dreams and hopes on God's will. Because we, we don't own our life. We don't own our time. The Bible said our times are in his hands. So that is the lesson. Human ambition, human achievements, human dreams and hope, they are futile. They are just shallow and hollow in the face of death. So what is that what then does that um What's the implication of all that? What is the implication of all that? We have to prepare. We have to be ready. We have to know what counts. Some of the things that we count may not count at the end of the day. What counts before God should be that which counts for us and with us. We should prepare. I want to say prepare. Prepare. How do we make this preparation? How do we prepare for eternity? How do we prepare for life after death? That when I was in secondary school, I think I was saying that before, but I didn't complete it. When I was in secondary school, we were, we were taught this saying uh, in Latin. I, was, uh, I did Latin for one year, my first year. And, uh, um, I think second year, second year that's um, uh, form two, what you call year 80 over here. They stopped it. And I, and I, went, I cried, I cried, I cried. It's not that I love Latin. We are told uh, the saying it says, Tempus fugit most appropriate part. Tempus fugit most appropriate part. It means time flies, death approaches. You know, time is flying. You know, hello, Dio. God bless you. That time flies, death approaches. Puts Fujit most appropriate part. So we look forward to our birthday, celebrate, we look forward to that our achievement, we achieve it, we look forward to graduation, and we go there. Yes, great. But as we head towards the future, we are headed towards that inevitability of death. And uh, the, 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 that um, is a, a universal death. So while we are achieving and planning and we should also reflect and prepare for we don't know when a time will come.
So how do we then prepare? So people tell you, well, man come, man die, man go. It's all over. Well, unfortunately, I don't believe that. That's not the truth as I know it from the word of God. There is, the Bible says, it's appointed unto man once to die after that judgment. That's the day of reckoning. So death is not the end. So I'm talking about, you know, my friend that, 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 that passed. That was, I knew that was not the end. Well, that not the end. Why? Because he, as many of, many of us have done, had ensured his life with living Christ. So that's the, the only thing I can recommend to anybody. The, the best preparation you can make in, you can make in view of the inevitability and universality, the universality of death is to ensure, to, to ensure, ensure your life with the living Christ. Every other thing is sinking sand. And I, at the funeral service, I was, well, one well, of the things that hit me, I mean, I, I was impressed. I talked to my wife, I said, look, every word from the beginning of the service to the last amen at the grave, grave um, the, the gravesite was meaningful, impregnated with significance and meaning. One of the things, I mean, talk about the song, Oh Lord my God, when I'm also wonder. Fantastic song. Powerful words. How great the art. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. What a story. What, what, what a confession. That Jesus is mine. He, that's it, that's our hope. Everything else in life, everything else we can boast of is meaningless. The certainty we have in Christ is the, the only premise and the solid rock for our hope. Blessed assurance, that was one of the hymns, son. Jesus is mine. And then that, that wonderful, he began, in Christ alone, my hope is found. And the son has, again, which was sung, my hope is built on nothing else but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. So we, 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 are, we, we cannot brandish any form of good works before God. There's nothing we, can, we cannot come to God and say, yes, I'm this, I'm that, I'm chief this, I'm, I'm reverend that, I'm bishop that, and that. No, 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 no. The only merit by which we come is Christ and his work, his death and resurrection, that which is he accomplished, not for himself, but for us. And that's the best preparation you can make. That's the best preparation you can make. So those songs, you know, those songs, and some scriptures that were read, powerful scriptures, this was in John 14. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Because I said before, before because we know that, that we will die one day. Sometimes the heart, you know, we, we, we are full of anxiety. But Jesus says here, don't let your heart be troubled. Believe God. Believe also in me. No other religious leader can say that. No other philosopher can say that, can assure you. He said, believe God and believe me. In my father's house, he said, there are many masters. I would not have told you if it's not true. He assured us that he'll come and, call and take us to himself. If you have that hope, even in death, you can smile at death. This fantastic one hit me as it was read. John chapter 6. So Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Again, who are that? Which are that? You just did that. I can tell you that. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I say to you, 
you have seen me and yet okay if there's a verse that says here it says it says all that the father gives me will come to me and the one who comes to me i will by no means cast out anyone with all our issues will come to him see he will not cast us out that is the good news that is the gospel that is gospel that will make us look death in the face and say, na, 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 na. Uh, what's that? In, in evil, the same tall, you know? That's not, you can you can taunt death. Even, <laughs> even as, yes, even in the process of dying, we can look at death in the face and say, na, 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 because it does not hold permanent, uh, it does, it does not, don't have any permanent hold on anyone who believes in Jesus Christ. So assurance is that, uh, yes, as I said, we went to bring our friend on, 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 on Friday. I thought, yes, we shed tears because death's an enemy. Yes, we, we shed tears. But we did not sorrow like he, you know, those who have no hope. We, 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 we know that uh, he, he, he's the best. And one of the things I, I told uh, to even with tears in my eyes, yes. And I said to, to uh, somebody around me, I said, this, mark this grave. Mark this grave where our friend was buried. Sooner or later, according to First Thessalonians chapter 4, when the trumpet sounds, that spot will be one of the spots. You know, we say, watch this space. One of the Something will happen in that in, in, on the, on that spot. Something will happen. Something will happen there. According to the the divine power of in this life, that you say that the death in Christ, they rise. Nah, 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 they will rise. That I'm sure of. That I'm sure of. Beyond the tears, beyond the horror of death, that those who died in Christ. In fact, the Bible did not say that they died. They said they sleep. They wake. They'll be transformed, and those who are alive will join together. You know, but anyone outside Christ, in fact, my wife said something um, as we're coming back home. She said that she she will find it harrowing, difficult to attend the funeral of someone who does not believe in Jesus. Said she said she said she said putting her said I don't know how I will cope. I don't know how. How she could com who compose herself if she had, she were to attend a funeral of somebody who rejected Christ, who does not who does not embrace Christ as his Lord and personal Savior, that it will be she will find it difficult. I will too, because what can you say? Okay, I leave it there. So, in short. If there's any underlines, oh, let me see the way I could summarize this. It say that knowing that death is universal and inevitable, we have the chance. Every day is a chance for us to make our adjustment and think about our position in God, Mr. V. God towards God and the way to make peace with God is by receiving Jesus Christ as well as your Lord as my personal Savior if you know not also and then obviously walk in him and with him that all our ambitions all the things we accumulate all the things we dream about okay great it's good to dream it's good to aspire it's good to get no other sense but if it does not enhance or touch lives like our friends uses talents, abilities, and capabilities to serve people. If they're not help people, then it's meaningless. That ties it to what we we're sharing last week. But above all, ensure your life with the living Christ. God bless you. I leave it here. Thank you very much. Amen. But I remain Reverend Cyril Okuria, City Gate Ministries International, and this is the Sentinel. Thank you, uh, Daniel Shesi, for joining. Charlie Stone, thank you, Allah Ikokere. 
Senator Clemens, uh, God bless you. No, uh, Pastor Dosai, God bless you. Isaac Moore, Mohone, sorry. <laughs> God bless you. Harold Oladipo, God bless. Pastor Dr. Samuel Moe, God bless. Gift of Kerry Onyechi, God bless you. Pastor Ellen Jassy, God bless you. Chisco Cortez, God bless you. Chile Kechi, God bless you. Oye Ohaka, God bless you. Bye bye.